Hi everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So you're following along in our Factory Talk Activation Essentials video series. And in the last video, what we did is we went out to the Rockwell servers and downloaded the available activations. Now, of course, depending on what software you've purchased from Rockwell is largely going to determine which licenses or activations you'll be able to download from their servers. So in the last video, I showed you how to make use of the get new activations function and it did require an internet connection to do so and it brought you to the serial key, uh, number product key where you'll need the the red envelope that came in your software uh, in order to go ahead and download that so in a later video i am going to show you how to do it without an internet connection because sometimes in a, in the production environments we don't always have access to the internet um, but for the purposes of getting up to speed and getting up and running quickly, we went ahead and used the, um, I guess, the, the main way in order to do that via an internet connection. Okay, so what we did do, however, is glaze over the different act activation types that you are likely to have purchased and or download. So I want to talk about the different activation types uh, that you can purchase. Um, and we're going to look at two main ones. There is another one I'm not going to talk about, uh, which is capacity activations. But the two main ones I do want to talk about are the node locked activations and the concurrent activations. Okay, so the node locked activation is a locked. It's a it's a license that's locked to a single computer for exclusive use by that user and or computer. Okay, whereas a concurrent activation allows for the shared usage of a factory talk product by many users on different computers that are geographically separated. So we're, we're looking more towards or leaning more towards the concurrent type activations because we're setting up an activation server and then we're going to have clients consume activations from our server and they can be spread out across geographic regions, okay? So if you're looking to set, set up a central server to host all your different Rockwell activations, you'll wanna make sure that you buy the concurrent license types. So with the concurrent activations, the activation server manages the pool of activations and shares them with the client, other client computers over a network connection. So the activation file itself is stored and locked to the activation server. And you can see there are three different methods by which we can lock an activation. One of them is by the disk serial, which we did here when we went through in the previous video. The other one is by using your network interface card. And the third option is using a USB dongle. And the, the benefit of the dongle is similar to the reason why I like to run them in, in virtual machines is that if your PC or, or server goes down, the idea is you can move the dongle to another server and the licenses will go on it and be licensed or activated to the dongle and not any machine. But in my experience, um, if you do these, set these things up in a VM, you activate it to the disk serial, you have a backup of the VM entirely, and then you can always deploy to a different machine in that case. So those are the three basic activation types. So, and again, with the concurrent activation, the activation files themselves are stored and locked to the activation server. And the activation server holds the host ID key used to activate the software. And then a network connection to the activation server is required to check out an activation. I'm using the finger quotes. So your clients, and we'll do an example of this, will connect to the activation server and provided you have a concurrent type license on the activation server, it will have the ability to check out that license. So the larger the pool of activations, the more licenses you can check out concurrently, which is why they call them concurrent activations, uh, at the same time. The benefit of this is now you don't have to individually license each PC, laptop, or field device that needs to run Rockwell software. This is the whole idea behind it. Now you can have a small pool of licenses and provided that you're not using all of this, all of these devices at, at the same time, whatever licenses you have on your activation server in the pool, 
you can run those simultaneously and distribute them throughout your plant by pulling those those licenses from the activation server themselves. So the idea is it keeps the license count down and allows you to run Rockwell software on various uh, machines in your in your environment. So I hope it's clear what, what the advantage of the concurrent activations are. So now that we have a firm grasp on the different activation types and how we can activate or register those licenses that we pull from the Rockwell server via means of our network interface to serial or dongle, I think we can now safely move on to the next step, which is to actually go into our client and pull one of those concurrent activations. But before we do that, I'm gonna head back to the activations I have installed. And you can see here, I'm just gonna expand that a little bit. You can see here, I do have a node lock license here which is the RS Links Professional. And then the remaining licenses I have are actually concurrent type licenses. So that means these guys will all be available for the cl any client to consume them. You can see the license counts I currently have are basically one of each. So I can only have one other client actually use any one of these given software packages at a given time. However, if you have multiple licenses or multiple instances of these software packages, you'll see your counts incremented here to whatever you've paid for as far as license counts. And therefore, those licenses will be available in your pool to be consumed by clients. So I hope that's clear. So I think we'll cut this video off here because I just wanted to touch on the different activation types and what the differences between the two major ones were. And in the next video, we're gonna head over to our client PC and see if we can figure that manager to pull activations from the activation server here. And we'll flip back and forth and we'll see that in fact, we can do that. So I hope you found this video informative. Please do subscribe to our channel and like this video and head on over to our companion site at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. This is Fred and thank you for watching.